I am tuned in to the wisdom of the universe. I am tuned in to the wisdom of the universe. Would you say that with me? I am tuned in to the wisdom of the universe. And let's say that again, and this time let's use the word we. We are tuned in to the wisdom of the universe. You know, right where we are, just as we are, there is this infinite field of potentiality. The wisdom, the love, the, the infinite power of God. We are living in it. We are steeped in it. We are kind of like the fish who asks the other fish, where's the water? I can't see it. You know, we are like that. God energy moves in and through all of us all the time, this infinite field of potentiality. And we have access to that field. I want to share about uh, something that happened just a couple of weeks ago when I was on the Unity People's Convention. Uh, we were on a cruise this year, a Caribbean cruise, and... Um, about midway through the week, I had a conversation with one of my minister friends. And she said, you know, I just want to see some dolphins. She said, here we are on this big cruise ship. You'd think there'd be some dolphins out there that I could see. And I said, well, why don't you just call them? Just call them. You see, we, we know that we're all of one mind, even with the animal and the plant life. And, and, and she and I had been talking about that anyway. And she said, yes, yeah, she would. Just call them and just... Let it go and know that she would see them. Well, the days passed, and finally we got to the final day of the cruise. And it just so happened that she was on the deck at the time that the dolphins appeared. Now, there were not not just one or two dolphins. There were scores of dolphins, and they were jumping. They weren't just, like, jumping. like They were jumping and spinning around and dancing. <laughs> Too many to count, she says. And even though there were lots of people on the deck at that time having the opportunity to watch these dolphins, she knew that she had called them. Now, you know, you might think, oh, well, that's just coincidence. But I don't believe that it was coincidence. I believe that her heart energy reached out because she is one with all creation, dolphins included, and that, 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 that somehow they showed up at just the time when she would be able to see them. What we're talking about today is, is, is the vibration of your energy field, the frequency at which you vibrate in this world. And so how does it work? How does it work that she's able to call the dolphins? How does it work that, that, that when you pick up the phone to call somebody and you reach them and they say to you, I was just thinking of you, right? Hasn't that happened to you? And you say, oh, it's just a coincidence. But I don't believe that it's a coincidence. I believe that you were already on the same wavelength as that individual when that happened. You see, we think that we are separate, but we're not. We, we feel that because we can touch our own hands and our own bodies, and we can see your hand and your body, so we think that we are separate, but the truth is we're not. I want to read to you what author Pam Grout wrote in this amazing book she wrote called God Doesn't Have Bad Hair Days. Don't you love that title? God Doesn't Have Bad Hair Days. What that means is that God doesn't wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, oh, I'm going back to bed, right? God is a constant energetic presence available and with us always. And Pam, by the way, got her start in unity right here in this church. She now lives in Lawrence. She's written wonderful books. Her most recent is called E Squared. Anyway, so in this book, God Doesn't Have Bad Hair Days, Pam writes, she writes, we may look like separate bodies with separate ideas, but we are all just one big pulsating, vibrating field of consciousness. One big vibrating field of consciousness. In fact, do you know that when the scientists look inside your body as they're able to do. You know, first they see the skin and the bones and all that. But as they continue to look, they move to the atomic level. They see the atoms. And then as they continue to look further, what they see is space, what appears to be emptiness. They assert that you and I, our bodies are 99%. Well, you would say empty, or you might say consciousness. There's only 1% of us, they say, that's actually matter. It's all the space in between the matter that vibrates with consciousness. 
Pam gives a wonderful example of how it is that we think we're separate, but we're not. So I don't know if any of you happen to be in the Manhattan Macy's on August the 14th at 4 p.m. in the year of 2003. I know I wasn't, but she says if you had been there at 4 p.m. on August the 14th, 2003, all the power went out. And you might have thought, oh, well, something's gone wrong with Macy's generator. Or maybe, you know, a taxi cab ran into a telephone pole. I don't know. That's maybe what you thought. Until you came out and realized that it wasn't just Macy's at all. In fact, as you came out, you might have realized that the power went out in eight states and Ontario, Canada. Indeed, 263 power plants went down, all because of one tiny malfunction in a power plant in Ohio. Now, that's a visible, tangible demonstration of how we're all created, right? This web of interconnectedness. But it happens on the invisible level as well. And Pam writes, she said that we, 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 are, we mold and shape this field of consciousness. She says at each moment, you mold and shape the energy by your consciousness. You do this with every thought, every intention, every action. How you feel, what you think, how you believe, what you value, and how you live your life affects how the energy flows through you. To put it in simplest terms, it affects how you vibrate. Now think for a moment about the energy, that 99% of you, that is vibrating. And think for a moment of what your vibrational field was like before you got to church this morning. What was it like? Can you think back? What was your energy like? What was your energy field like? If somebody had been around you without hearing any words, what might they have felt? You know, the folks at HeartMath say that they can actually measure the field of energy around a person. So Pam Grout goes on to say, how you vibrate affects what you pull in. How, how you vibrate affects what you pull in from the interlocking, interbalancing, ever-moving energy field with which you swim. You pull out of this field and into your world anything that happens to be vibrating on the same frequency or wavelength. So how you are vibrating, your energy field makes a difference to what you attract into your life. She uses an example of a tuning fork. A tuning fork is a specially designed piece of metal that if you strike it, it will create a sound of a perfect pitch, a particular pitch that that tuning fork is designed to make. And musicians use it to tune instruments, voices, and such. Now, if this room were filled with a bunch of tuning forks and you struck one of them and there was another tuning fork in the room that was at the same pitch, it too would sound. They would both sound. All the others wouldn't. But the ones that are a match would sound. And that's how it is that what we put out into the universe as far as our energy is what we call to us. So the question today is, how do you raise the frequency of your vibration? Depending upon how it is that you remember you were feeling and, and how your energy field was before you got here, how might you raise that field of vibration? And I'm going to give you a few ideas to think about today. And the first is to set your intention at the level of the Christ. See, I believe that that's how Jesus healed. I believe that Jesus' energy field was so aligned and attuned with his God nature that there was no sense of separation in him, no belief in separation in him. And so his energy field was so pure and so attuned to divine potentiality that all he had to do was walk in a room, walk beside someone who was in need of healing. And, and like the tuning fork, he'd actually, in a way that goes beyond really the tuning fork, he would call their energy up to that level of healing because he would call to himself everything that was a match for that. So the invitation, because we know in unity that we call Jesus our elder brother and way shower, our invitation is to intend to be at that level of the Christ. 
that level of pure potentiality and pure oneness with God. And you know the best way to do that. The best way to do that is with your meditation and your prayer. Your meditation and your prayer. That's how the, when you consistently create a practice of meditation, you attune to this Christ consciousness. And then you begin to call more of the same to you. You know, at the beginning of a meditation, if, I, if I'm leading the meditation, if you open your eyes, now most people have their eyes closed at that time, but if you open your eyes, what you'll see is that I am scanning the room. And I'm really scanning the room with my heart. And I'm, I'm scanning the room to feel into the energy that's present. And then to center into the Christ energy. And I call upon that Christ energy knowing that it is here. Knowing that there's a wisdom beyond what my human brain can grasp, but that there is a wisdom of the universe. So the first thing you want to do if you want to raise your frequency is, is set the intention to vibrate at the level of the Christ and to know that that is possible. As the Apostle Paul said, Christ in you, your hope of glory. All right, so the second is to hang with people who do the same. In other words, surround yourself with people who are also setting their intention to vibrate at the level of the Christ consciousness. You know who they are, the people who make you feel better. You know who they are, the people who, for whom when you are in their presence, your energy lifts because you become a vibrational match to them. Just this week, I received an email from a friend of mine who has had a number of challenges in her life over the past couple of years, and indeed another one befell her. And she said to me, she said, so what I'm doing right now is I am focusing on spending my time at church gatherings and at 12-step group meetings. Why? Because she knows that if she attends a meeting at her church, she will be surrounded by people who are vibrating at a higher level, who are intending to be in that field of divine consciousness. And when she goes to her 12-step meetings, the same thing. These folks are not about wallowing in a story. They're about helping her see her wholeness in being there with and for her. You know, we had that wonderful Empowered Living Moment share earlier by Luke Harbour. And I have to say about Luke, and this is the absolute truth, I have never been around Luke that I did not leave feeling better. I've never been around you, Luke, that I did not leave feeling more love in the universe, more hopefulness, more true divine energy. <laughs> I know Luke's going off to North Carolina, and they are richly blessed. <laughs> And if you need an example of oneness, you know, in Luke's sharing earlier, he told you that when he was a small child, he received a liver that had lived the first part of its life in someone else's body. If we are not one, then how does that work? How does it work that a liver that began its life in someone else's physical body can bring life to another? We are one and there's a divine wisdom and an intelligence that is accessible to all of us in ways that we can see and in ways that we can't. So the third step, in addition to the, the remember the first one, is to set your intention to be at the frequency of the Christ consciousness. And the second is to hang with people that are doing the same. So the third is to pay attention to your field of energy. Pay attention to your frequency. Pay attention to the vibration of your energy field. You know, it, it's kind of like tuning into a radio station. Ask yourself if you're tuned in to the radio station that you want to listen to. And if you're not, then you can do some tweaking and some adjusting. Now, none of this means that you ought to ignore how you're feeling. Your feelings are important, and some of you are here today perhaps grieving the loss of a loved one. Some of you are here today carrying sadness with you or irritability or anger. All of those feelings are important. None of them are bad. They may be unpleasant, 
but none are bad. And I always encourage you to pay deep attention to your feelings. They are like messengers that are trying to get your attention. Ask your feelings what they want. Be with them. And as you are with them, then you move through them and you begin to elevate your frequency. And you don't go from deep grief to great joy in a moment. But be with the feelings. Allow them their message that they need to express to you. And then you can begin to elevate your frequency. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, wrote this book called The Atom Smashing Power of the Mind. I think it's one of the best titles ever. And in the book, he says that you and I must be what it is that we seek. We must be what we seek. And he says, it's the law of spirit that we must be that which we would draw to us. Think about that. He says, it's, it's the law of spirit that we must be that which we would draw to us. He says, if we would draw to us love, we must be love. Be loving and kind. If we would have peace and harmony in our environment, we must establish it within ourselves. That which we hold in consciousness will be made manifest for us. Therefore, we should not hold the thought of anything that we do not want to see appear. So part of paying attention to your frequency is noticing your thoughts. About a week and a half ago, one of our church members shared with a group of us that he has been vigilant about watching his thoughts and he's to the point now where he catches them. He rarely has a self-deprecating or negative thought that he's aware of. And when he does catch it, he's able to release it. Well, I can't say that I'm necessarily at that place yet, but paying attention to your thoughts is an important part of lifting your vibrational frequency. I want, I want you to think of yourself as a magnet. As a magnet of consciousness that is attracting to you like consciousness. So the ideas, the thoughts, the words you speak, all vibrate in a certain way, and they draw to them ideas and resources and people and experiences that are a vibrational match, like the tuning fork, like the woman calling for the dolphins. These are all examples to illustrate that you are a powerful, powerful attracting energy calling into your life that which you are a magnet for. Today we're going to have a chance in just a few minutes to bless our new signs, the new signs that we have on our building. And interestingly, I received an email just last night, and I want to share with you just a portion of it from one of our church members. And she writes, she says, I don't remember where we were going when we attended our first service at UCOP. But I'm glad we listened to the divine voice that steered us into the parking lot. Now, I just want you to think about that image of someone driving past and all of a sudden something reaches out to them and they just turn into the driveway. I'll bet that happened to some of you. How many of you drove by this church for years before you ever came in? Yeah, right. You know, there's a right time for everything. And also, what I know is that there is a radiating energy that goes beyond this particular room, this particular campus, and extends outward. And so I'm inviting you to join me in seeing our new building signs. We have five of them. To see them as magnets of attraction that are reaching out into our community to invite in those people who are searching for a spiritual home, for a positive path for spiritual living, those people who are searching for a spiritual place to call their home. Let's look at the signs for a moment. We've got pictures of them here. So the first one, that is the sign that we've got at our corner on 103rd in Antioch. It's a beautiful sign. Okay, let's see the next one. This is the sign on our building. The next one. Uh, we've got a, another sign on the building on the left. That's to uh, announce our bookstore presence. And then the other one, we have two signs like that at the, front, at the entrance to our parking lot. And those signs are just to catch people as they're driving down the road. Now let's look at this. Okay, so these are the coolest of all. You can't quite see them on the screens, but these are what the signs look like at night because they light up at night. 
I can't wait for it to be winter so that we can, you know, you're not always driving by at this particular time of day. I mean, it went, but, but the, the sign on the building, just the words unity, just kind of sign out, light up and reach out into the darkness, a be- beacon of light. They're beautiful. And so what we're going to do right now in this moment, I'm going to ask you to join me in blessing these signs in imbuing them with the positive consciousness, the powerful energy consciousness that is within your heart and your soul right now. I invite you to see these signs. Get an image of them in your mind or look at the screen again. I invite you to see these signs as beacons of light for our world. As powerful magnets that are right now attracting to Unity Church of Overland Park people who are in search of a congregation that's vibrating at a high frequency. People who are in search of expressing their true Christ nature. May these signs radiate outward into our world the Christ light, the Christ power, the Christ love. May everyone who sees them feel uplifted, empowered with pure potentiality. May the very cells in their body, all that 99% that looks empty but is alive, may their consciousness resonate with the Christ consciousness of love that radiates forth from Unity Church of Overland Park. And so, dear God, we bless this community. We bless these signs. And we send out an invitation to the world to join with us in elevating the consciousness of this globe in being and beaming the Christ consciousness of love. And for this, we are truly deeply grateful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It is done. Amen. God bless you.